Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Anita and the Man. I'm Brian Stewart. Blessings. Jesus loves you. Welcome to our morning broadcast, 6 a.m. here, coming Pacific Standard Time here, the west coast of North America, right here in Los Angeles, California. And Anita sends her love. I send her love. We're going to over 200 countries this morning, this afternoon, wherever you are. Spreading the love of the Lord, continuing with our Proverbs series, going through 11 through 20 today, in Proverbs 24. 11 through 20. So, let's put our finger right into the Bible of Proverbs 24. We should know where that is. comes right where, brethren, please, please, you do know where that is. And we could just praise the Lord, raise the praise, get edified and educated in preparing us stronger within these end times that we are living in. And this, my Lord, this, my Lord, is the way that we wish to... Come to your people. This, my Lord, is, is we're getting stronger and stronger, going to further, further, deeper and deeper crusades in, in Africa and Europe, in Canada, Asia, right here in Los Angeles, California. We do look up to you, our Lord. We love you. We need you. So let's go before the throne of God and pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this day, this hour, this time that we come together in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one mind and one judgment of Christ to receive your strength, to lift up our, our repentance and our praise every day. Coming into your vision, the living word of God is always pregnant, revealing the manifestation of your glory, walking upon that road of grace through the love that you taught us of, removing of the Old Testament love so you we could have your grace, for grace by we are saved, walking upon that straight and narrow where many are called if you are chosen. We take this afternoon, no matter where we are living, we take this, this time, Right now here in North America, the morning is just starting. And that we just go and we shall be peacemakers and change makers of our, our world and our time. In the matchless name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we love thee. Brethren, this is all. The choices are all up to you. So, again, we are doing our part. We cannot make you ex execute your own life, but we can. We must. We must do this together. So, verse eleven through twenty of Proverbs twenty-four: If thou forbear to, de to to deliver them that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain. Proverbs twenty-four eleven through twenty, verse eleven: If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain. If thou sayest, behold. We knew it not. Doth not he that pondereth the heart considereth it, and he that keepeth thy soul doth he doth he know it. And he shall not be rendered to every man according to his works. My son, eat thou honey, because it is good, and the honeycomb which is sweet to thy taste. So shall so shall the knowledge of wisdom be born unto the soul when thou hast found it. Then there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous, spoil not his resting place. For, for just man falleth seven times, and rise up, rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. Least the Lord see it, and it displeases him, and he turn away his wrath from him. Fret not thyself from the wicked, from the evil man, neither be thou envious at the wicked. For there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus, for the reading of this word. We don't want to have anything to do with our own candles being put out. And again, it is not so much that we have our own life and our own desires and our own dreams. Taking that cup of wisdom that my wife, that God fills for me and my wife provides me with a wonderful cup of tea in the morning. You have not because you ask not. So we ask God to fill that cup of wisdom every day. With his brethren, first quick announcement. We want you to stay up to date with our news and information. So come and visit us at BrianTewitt.com of our crusades happening very soon around the corner. And with your time, brethren, you have to remember, if you're going to be envious of anyone, that have it upon yourself. You just walked away from the yoke of bondage. You changed your life. You changed your friends. And we are here for you as a relationship. So we, we 
as we get into our lesson today, feel this relationship working for you. Feel this relationship coming from God for you. So we invite you to become a, a part of our ministry by traveling with us, guiding with us, traveling with us. Be part of our evangelical team, our ministry. Sow your seed into this ministry. We are a 501c3 certified church here in the United States. So our phone name is Morningstar Communications Network, MCN Ministries. We love you in the name of the Lord, or in Jesus' name. Verse 10 expresses to all that if they'll faint in the day of adversity, their strength is small. So that's, that's what... That's what getting into the Word of God gives us that strength so we do not faint. Walking in His walk, getting into midweek Bible study, Sunday services, the fellowship of the saints. We have a large crowd that we listen to. It's not like we're listening to a, a, a neighborhood from around the corner. So you have that great opportunity, brethren, to go into your community, excuse me, and, and be a change, give yourself that change, going into different churches and having God guide you with changing yourself, changing your attitude, changing everything about you in the name of Jesus. Adversity and small are derived from the common root meaning narrow. Adversity is, is the test of a person's character and endurance. Any kind of sinner can put on a pretty good show of being a Christian. When things are going well, but when adversity comes, it shows where the real strength lies. Who is genuine, strong, grounded Christian? And if one faints in the in the day of, of adversity, he reveals he has not received as much wisdom and knowledge. Verse five, as he should have, as he should have endured the adversity. And even Job chapter four three through five fainted in the day of adversity. If thy strength be small, go to him who giveth power to the faint, who increases strength to them that have no might. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. And verse 11. If thou forbear to deliver them, thou art drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain. This cannot refer to the justly condemned of God has ordained that such are to be immediately put to death. Numbers 35, 31 through 33, in Deuteronomy chapter 17. 6 and 7. A great du duty required of us to appear for the rel relief of oppressed innocence. Though the persons be not such as we are under the, any particular obligation to, we must help them out of a general zeal of justice. First Theologians chapter 5 verse 15 expresses a similar expression, thought, who stands by and does nothing to to deliver those who are mistreated to their innocency, one day find themselves being mistreated with none to help them. <clears throat> Verse 12. If thou savest, behold, we know it not. Doth not he that pondereth the heart considereth it? And he that keepeth the soul, doth not he know, doth he now know it? And shall not be, and shall not he render to every man according to his will? According to his works. I'm sorry. Excuses are easy to find. We have people trying to destroy each other, thinking they're God or pathetic or straddling the fence of in-between, uh, passing themselves off as different people. God wants us to grow within our own temples, within our own, within, within our own names, within our, our thought process of control and guiding and being with that for all of eternity until God gives you that new name that only God knows. Excuses, and that's when you get kingdom bound. Excuses are not easy to find when one does not want to do his duty. But God knows our innermost thoughts, doesn't he? So Proverbs 16, 2, 21, verse 2 as references. And I give you these because I want you to be hungry to get these scriptures on your own. And to pray through these scriptures to write down these scriptures or future study references yourself. He judges the truth, not just according to our outward appearances. He sees and knows when our excuses are lying deep inside of us. And that's how often we deceive ourselves with our own excuses. But we do not deceive God, who is the keeper of the soul, and who consequently knows 
and better than anybody else. And that includes our spouses. The last phrase is taken from Psalm 62, verse 12, and is quoted to Revelation 20:12 20, and 22:12, and is variously referred elsewhere. God dwells with the people on the basis of their works. Not that their works have anything to do with their justification, because, but because they manifest the ruling disposition of the heart. In judgment, God always deals in perfect justice, which is according to every man's excuse, every man's works. Verse 13, I son, eat thou honey, because it is good in thy honeycomb, which is sweet to thy taste. Honey was the most common from sweetness in ancient times, and the land of Canaan was especially adapted for the production of honey. Exodus 3, through chapter 3 and 8, 7, verse 17 and 13, chapter 13, verse 15, and Matthew chapter 3, verse 4. It was a food that almost everyone enjoyed, and science has found that, that it is one of the most healthful foods having been, been digested into the product by bees. Solomon is not, however, here teaching on wise dietary practices, but rather uses the honey as a symbol of sweetness of the word. As a flowing verse, as a flowing verse shows, so shall, in verse 14, so shall the reward, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not, shall cut, shall not be cut off. The likeness of the word of God to the sweetness of honey is a common metaphor. Psalms chapter 19, 19, 9 through 10. 119 verse 103. Thus we have thus we have here a gracious invention to partake of a sweetness of divine wisdom. It is like honey both sweet to the taste and good and also good for one, resulting in blessings to the soul and rewards to, to life. Thus should we feed upon wisdom and relish the good instructions of it. Those who have experienced the power of truth and godliness are abundantly sat satisfied of the pleasure of both. But this metaphor also suggests something practical. Just as one can enjoy the sweetness of honey without eating it, no, so none can enjoy wisdom without studying the study of it and submission to it. <clears throat> Jesus, we love the truth that you blessed us with, the wisdom, the guidance. We drink this cup of wisdom knowing that it's going to bring more change upon us. Walking across the river change to the everlasting life across that time, across that being, across that time of change. Brethren, this is our way, our time, our truth. Bring it to God's loving love right now. Bring it to us, God. Guide us into your, your, your strength and your beauty, your love, your time. In Jesus' name, we go and express the living word of God is a healing to us. A healing to us. So, verse 15, it sings out loud to you, brethren. It's singing out loud to you. Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. Because if you are with God, whether a minister or just spreading the living word, word of God as a Christian, if, if any of these wicked people you know, come do harm to you, they shall have their just rewards. God, so just fight the fight of good faith. Get into the living word of God. Proclaim his name. Raise the praise every day. Raise, you know, just and go and be, be a witness to those as you were once a witness to. And win souls for the kingdom of heaven. So dwelling is more commonly rendered full. Which suggests a humble dwelling place. For hum, however humble it may be, the wicked had better not lay wait to, to, the e to do evil to the Lord's people, for he is the avenger, the avenger of such. <clears throat> Luke chapter 18, 7 and 8. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 6 and 8. 6 through 8. Assail him not either by secret fraud or open violence. Scripture here assures the righteous that God will def defend him sec securely from both. It is often the case that in, the con in, the, in his contempt of God, the wicked man assaults the Christian since he can not assault God personally. He may evil he may even do evil to Christians in the attempt to thereby convince himself that God neither does not exist 
or that he takes no interest in the affairs of earth. But there is a judgment to come for all who misuse God's people. For a just man falleth seven times, verse 16, and rises up again. But the wicked shall not fall into mischief. This expresses the security of the saint, though he may fall many times, yet no fall is ever permanent. We feel that, you know, the choices of our life can oftentimes lead to mistakes. Sometimes they're not the choices the world wants us to, but we, but eventually, through our faith, through our measurement of carrying the cross with Christ and dying daily upon that cross, we go and we are changed as we pick ourselves up and get back on that straight and narrow. The saint is not secure because his, uh, because of anything within himself. Rather, he, he is secure because God's faithfulness to his promise to keep the to keep the believer. And first Peter chapter one three through five. And John chapter ten twenty eight through thirty. But conversely, the wicked fall into evil with no promise rescue from even one fall, so that his fall is permanent calamity. Seven being the number of completeness suggests a continual rescue from every fault that comes upon the righteous. What a wonderful and encouraging promise to the saints. In salvation, we lose what we cannot keep in order to gain. In salvation, we lose what we cannot keep in order to gain what we cannot lose. Grace is the basis of the saint's security. So get deeper and deeper and deeper into Christ. Deeper and deeper and deeper into Christ. And for those who don't know Christ, take this opportunity in their part of the world, whether you're AM hours here in North America, the mid to late afternoon, I believe early evening. Yes, early evening, let's say in some of the Asian countries. Let's bring this together into God's fold. Walk into the arms of Christ today. You are, we want you to be redeemed. You're not going to be redeemed when you get to heaven. You are redeemed now, <clears throat> right here. So let's be redeemed for the new for the Christians that are new, or the Christians that need to be saved. Let's come forward in the name of Jesus. Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever, that is you, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now we must make a public demonstration of our faith, but where you are now, let's just focus on our reality of our soon-to-be redemption with God. Repeat this after me. Come forward in the name of Jesus. That's you, please. Dear God, I admit I am a sinner, and I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place paying the penalty for my sins. I am willing right now to turn my sin and accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and Lord. I commit myself to and ask you to send the Holy Spirit into my life and to take control to make me the kind of person you have always wanted me to be. Thank you, Father, for loving me. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing me forward. As my wife prays in your name in the background, I am praising your name. Most important, the angels of heaven are singing your name before the throne of God. It does not get any better than that. Having your name expressed, sung, right before God himself on the throne by his own angels. We come, brethren, into this world bringing the absolute truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. The living word of God is the healer. God is the healer. Anita and the man, we are just the vehicles. We don't, we cannot possess these powers by waking up and saying, I think I'll be a healer. No. God gives us these gifts at his time. But we must get into the practice of praying. A practice of naming it and claiming it by asking God what we want. If you believe in your heart that you shall receive it, you shall have it. And answer prayer starts where, brethren? In heaven. So your prayers go up before God like incense right before his face. And this is how we change. This is the poetry of our, our expression that whenever we do speak, remember the words are Words can be like ammunition if they're used wrong. So the words that you express, think of it, think of it, of the words, they are from words of God speaking through you. So let's really get into that practice of controlling our tongue. And we spoke about that a few weeks ago. With the purpose that we have, 
God's calling, as he did with me, can give you one measurement stick at a time. So verse 17, Rejoice not when an enemy falleth. Let not thine heart be glad when, when he stumbleth. This deals with our attitudes towards enemies. We are not to take delight in any evil that befalls any, for it is only the grace of God that prevents from it coming upon us. Not only are we not to ex exult in more severe calamity, but not even in lighter one of the enemy. The notion is false that the Old Testament does not prescribe love of enemies. The Christian is to overcome evil with good. Romans 12, 18 through 21. Exulting over the problems of, a, of an enemy generally stems from a self-righteous spirit. David set a good example in this when he mourned over Saul's death. Though Saul had often mistreated him, chapter 2, Samuel, chapter, chapter 1, verse 17. And also Obadiah, chapter 12. In what the Lord sees, we feel. God gives us a new strength every day. That's where prayer, practice into the living word of God every day comes into this time, right now. Right now, brethren. At least the Lord sees it, verse 18. And it displeases him, and he turned away his wrath from him. It is not so expressed. But no, but one wonders if if the if the thought is not by turning away the wrath from one's enemy and letting it fall upon the one rejoicing to the calamity. None of us can perfectly discern the reasons why calamities fall, and so it, so and so it it behooves us to think that they always indicate God's discipline's sake, sometimes to test one's faith, sometimes to develop patience. The Lord sees our attitudes, however deeply that he may be hidden in the heart, and he deals with us accordingly. Hence the need to always maintain a right attitude does not matter whether any man knows it or not. Fret not thyself because of evil men, but neither be thou envious of the wicked. Verse 19. Even that which grieves us must not fret not us, nor, m nor, nor must our eyes be evil against any of any, because God is good. Love your enemies, how you drive your your enemies crazy is forgive them. Drive them into an institution. Love them doesn't mean you have to hang with them. And verse 20. <clears throat> For there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. Do you want that as your lifestyle no as soon as you are having the high mighty glory you are put out however much wicked men may seem to be accumulating in life however carefree may he may seem the discerning christian knows that he is put is but a step from death and eternity when he shall be separated from god for his feeble flickering light of physical life shall go out leaving him eternity to the blackness of darkness how, how foolish and feels how our envy of sinners will then appear. The Christians not only have eternal life, but are the are the promised rewards of everything they suffer for the for the Lord's sake. Divine wisdom assures us of this. Romans chapter eight, sixteen through eighteen. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this time today. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your strength that you come into us. Guide us, O Lord, through this day. Guide us, O Lord, through your evening. Guide us, O Lord, through the fellowship of the saints. Let us go and proclaim. Let us all get into midweek Bible study, Sunday services, fellowship of the saints. We invite you, brethren, to, to come and join our ministry, the MCM Ministries, Morning Star Communications Network. We are a 501c3 certified church in the United States. And come and get to know us We at briantewitt.com, briantewitt.com. We love you. You are a blessing to us, and we are going to be a deeper blessing to you. And we want you to join us in all of our crusades happening overseas. So, with that, brethren, we go into on our time. This is Friday. My wife will be back at 11 a.m., 3 p.m. I'll be back at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And then our Saturday schedule is 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. For my wife and myself. So, brethren...
We love you. And let's, let's just go before the throne of God and pray out. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your time, the endless time of your love that brings us to your great road of grace, that brings us to your straight and narrow. Many are called, a few are chosen. We thank you for your time. The endless rhyme, rhyme of your love, kingdom bound we are. Wisdom, you have taken us to the stream, the river of wisdom, baptized us in the name of Jesus Christ, and brought us upon this straight and narrow. We are covered by hope, faith, and love. The greatest gift is love. Galatians 5.22, God, you make us into our own walking orchard as expressed in Galatians 5.22. But the greatest of these spiritual gifts, the fruits of the spirits, is love. Peace, peace of mind, peace of heart, peace of everything that, that comes out of us as a presence of you, O oh God. Let us be a witness to those that need you, God. But bring your heavy hand of love from the countries of Syria, Mali, Nigeria. Heal, heal all the polo issues that are going on throughout all the world, the illnesses of, 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 you, of the children in, in Uganda. Let us oh, go in the matchless name of Jesus and spread the glory ever some more. In Jesus' name, we love thee. Brethren, that does conclude our broadcast for this morning. Uh, we thank you for your time. Until next time, on behalf of Anita Hewitt and yours truly, Brian Hewitt, we walk by faith and not by sight. Come visit us and stay up to date with all of our news and information at, at our crusades, of our crusades at BrianChewitt.com, BrianChewitt.com. Au revoir, adios, good day, for the people.